Welcome to AEP SPAN's AIA Certified Nano course. This course covers important information regarding standing seam metal roofs and thermal movement. Now, there are three learning objectives. The first learning objective is understanding why standing seam metal roofs expand and contract, meaning thermal movement. The second learning objective will help you understand how points of fixity are important to accommodate for thermal movement. And in the third learning objective, we will cover thermal movement in exposed fastener versus standing seam metal roof panels. Now, before we get started, let's do some introductions. My name is Marie Ortega and I am product manager for AEP SPAN. And with us today is Jeff Haddock, technical manager for AEP SPAN. So welcome, Jeff. Hello, Marie, and thank you for having me. So Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and your role as product manager? Sure. I started working for AEP SPAN back in 2002 and have been in a technical capacity with the company since about 2008. I've done just about everything you can do with a metal roof from making it, to selling it, installing it, and now my current role is a technical manager for the company. I've found the most satisfaction working on the technical side of the business as it affords me the ability to work with our installers in the field as well as work with, our, with the design community on project applications where metals to be used. Thank you, Jeff. So let's get started with our first learning objective. Understanding why standing seam metal roofs expand and contract. Can you explain to everyone what thermal movement is? Absolutely. All metals used in roofing expand and contract with changes in material temperature. When designing a metal roof, this must be taken into consideration. Standing seam metal roof systems owe their design in large part to the necessity of providing for expansion and contraction. Buckling of the sheets, tearing at the seams, and loosening or pulling through of fasteners are common failures caused by inadequate provisions for expansion and contraction. Do all metals expand and contract at the same rate? Great question, Marie. The answer to that would be no. Metals do not expand and contract at the same rates, which is why it's very important to know what you're working with to ensure your roof is properly designed to accommodate for thermal movement. As you can see in this chart, various metals move at different rates. I'll give you an example. Let's compare the two most common materials used for roofing applications. You have aluminum zinc coated steel, which is often referred to as zinc alum or galvalum, and then you have pure aluminum. As a rule, Coated steel will expand and contract at a rate of about plus or minus an eighth of an inch per 10 foot of panel run. When you start thinking about long length panels that are 40 feet or more, the roof panels will be expanding and contracting at about half of an inch or more depending on the max length. Long roof runs can expand and contract at upwards of one inch or more when panel lengths get into the 80 foot range. By comparison, aluminum has twice the rate of thermal movement as steel of roof panels. For the same 40-foot roof, aluminum would expand and contract about one inch. Aluminum's rate of thermal movement is double what steel is. Now, that's a lot of movement taking place on the roof. If it is not accounted for, serious damage to your roof can take place. The panels can tear themselves apart, fail at the fastener locations, or give an unsightly appearance that is often blamed on oil canning, but is actually buckling of the roof panels. So how do standing seam metal roof panels account for this? Well, standing seam roof panels rely on concealed attachment with no visible fasteners to secure the panels to a given structure. This is done by way of a clip or concealed nailing flange. The clips allow the roof to expand and contract without compromising panel performance or weather tight integrity. Also, the fact that exposed fasteners are not utilized to secure the panels means the roof system will last for years without compromising weather tightness of the roof system. So are there advantages or disadvantages to using a standing seam metal roof panel? Yes, there are. The first and obvious advantage is that there are no exposed fasteners used to secure the roof, as I referenced earlier. Exposed fasteners can fail over time, resulting in a leak. Standing seam panels have all fasteners located under the panel or behind flashings. This drastically reduces the potential for a leak to take place. The concealed clip attachment also allows for free thermal movement of the roof system, ensuring that the issues associated with expansion and contraction of the roof panels are avoided. 
The disadvantages of using a standing seam roof panel system would be that they require a more skilled installer who has extensive knowledge in sheet metal fabrication. Many conditions are created in the field because of building design and may require custom fabrication of trims and flashings to make the system work. Another disadvantage of standing seam roof panels is that they are more difficult to make repairs in the event of a leak or roof damage. Panels might need to be removed to locate the source of a leak and depending on the panel system that is used, this can be challenging. For example, a snap lock style panel is fairly easy to remove as the panel can, seam can be separated and lifted to disengage the panel. The other side of the spectrums are mechanically seamed standing seam panels. These kinds of panels are locked into each other by folding or bending the panel's standing seam into itself. Once panels are seamed, they cannot be unseamed without potential for damage. Mechanically seamed panels usually require the seams to be cut off for removal, which renders the panels useless and requires full replacement for any panels that have, that have been cut. Therefore, it's critical to use a quality manufacturer and more importantly, a qualified installer that is approved by the manufacturer to perform roof installations utilizing standing seam roof panel systems. So let's move to the second learning objective. How points of fixity are important to accommodate for thermal movement. So how do you design a roof to accommodate thermal movement? Well, there are three ways to accommodate thermal movement of a standing seam roof panel, and each way requires the establishment of a point of fixity at one location on the roof. Establishing a point of fixity achieves two goals. The first is drag load resistance. Drag loads are loads associated with the weight of the panel and any equipment attached to the panel, such as solar panels or snow retention devices. The point of fixity or drag location prevents the panels from being pulled down slope by gravity the weight of the roof panel assembly, and other things loaded on the roof. The concealed panel clips used to secure the panels only resist wind uplift pressure. They will not prevent the panels from sliding down slope. That is the job of creating a point of fixity or drag load resistance. The second reason for establishing a point of fixity is to prevent thermal movement at that location and force it in the direction you want it to go. The first and most common way to accommodate thermal movement is by fixing the panels at the high side of the roof. Mm -hmm. By doing this, we are preventing thermal movement from taking place at the ridge or peak condition and forcing it to move down slope to the eave line or low point of the roof. You must always account for thermal movement and manufacturer's details are designed around this requirement. The second way to accommodate thermal movement would be along the eave line or low end of the panel. This requires that panels now expand and contract uphill to the ridge, peak, or high side of the panels. An example of why you would want thermal movement to run in this direction are continuous transitions of the roof panel over the eave, where the panels are folded down the fascia or wall without a break in the material. This fold creates a point of fixity which requires panels to now expand and contract uphill to the ridge. A specialized ridge detail is utilized that allows the roof panels to push into the ridge without tearing the ridge apart. The third way to accommodate thermal movement is allow thermal movement at both the high and low ends of the roof panel. This requires pinning the panel somewhere in the middle of the roof run, usually at the panel end lap, the middle of a long roof run, or apex of a radius roof application. Generally, this is done on extremely long panel runs over 70 foot where expansion contraction is so great that it makes it difficult to allow for movement at just one end of the roof panel. Or if thermal movement exceeds the capacity of the movable clips, as is the case with some mechanically seamed roof panels. So why would thermal movement exceed the capacity of the movable clips? I mean, aren't the clips designed to um, accommodate for that movement? Yes, panel clips are designed to allow for thermal movement. However, not all panel designs and panel clips are the same. One piece clips are designed to allow unlimited thermal movement of the panel while still securing the panel to the substrate. One piece clips are typically used on snap lock style or batten cap style profiles where the panel expands and contracts within the clip. This allows for unlimited thermal movement. The other type of clips are called two-piece clips or floating clips. 
Floating clips are designed to allow limited thermal movement of the panel while still securing the panel to the substrate. Floating clips are used with mechanically seen profiles. Floating clips are two-piece clips, which includes the body of the clip and the base of the clip. The body is installed into the male leg of the panel and the base is secured to the substrate. The female leg of the next panel is installed over the male leg and seamed into place. This folded seam locks the clip into position, requiring the main body and the base to move independently of each other. Two-piece clips typically max out at plus or minus one inch of thermal movement, which can limit the overall length of a roof panel. In this graphic, you can see an example of how much thermal movement a mechanically seamed roof panel can accommodate using floating two-piece clips. For purposes of this example, we'll say the clips are limited to plus or minus one inch of thermal movement. A roof that has the point of fixity established at the ridge or high side or the eave or low side of the roof, the panel lengths can accommodate out in the range of about 75 foot. At that length, thermal movement will be around one inch, which is at or near the limit of a floating or two-piece clip for mechanically seamed panels. Now let's say you have a roof that's longer than 75 foot, but are using a mechanically seamed panel with the same clip that has thermal movement limitations of plus or minus one inch. In this instance, we would establish our point of fixity mid-span or in the middle of a roof run. This creates the necessary drag load resistance and creates a lock point or a point of fixity in the center of the roof. What is essentially being done here is we are cutting the total thermal movement in half by forcing the expansion and contraction downhill and uphill from the point of fixity in the center of the roof. So now instead of trying to accommodate 150 feet of thermal movement, which can be upwards of two inch for steel panels, we, we can now expand and contract 75 of, of feet of panel uphill to the ridge or high side and 75 feet down to the eave or low side of the roof. This now allows the roof to be 150 foot in total length because we are controlling the thermal movement of the roof panels. You cannot eliminate thermal movement, but we can tell it which way we want it to go. Specialized details are needed to achieve this kind of installation, and it would be advised to consult the panel manufacturer when dealing with long length applications to ensure proper details are utilized for these kinds of applications. So earlier you mentioned needing to establish a point of fixity for barrel, barrel roofs. Um, why are barrel roofs handled differently and what is needed to accomplish that? Well, radius roofs or barrel roofs are curved roof applications that require the apex to be fixed or pinned. The panels cannot expand and contract around a radius. Uh, this is due to the curve. If the panels float around the full radius without a point of fixity at the apex, oil canning or deflected appearance in the panels mm -hmm. can appear. Fixing the apex can be achieved by installing a fixed clip, which doesn't allow for thermal movement at the apex. This establishes a point of fixity and forces thermal movement to both eaves. If fixed clips are not available, or the panel utilizes a single piece unlimited thermal movement clip, Manufacturers may call for the panel to be secured to the clips by way of a fastener of some other mechanical means. This would be the case with a batten cap style radius roof panel used in a radius application. So how are roof edges like gables designed to accommodate for expansion and contraction? Well, varying panel widths and thermal movement must be considered when detailing full length roof panels at gable or rate conditions of a building. In most cases, installers will not be able to utilize a full width panel at these locations due to building layout. There are specialized details which allow for cutting the panel to the necessary width and field folding the edge. The panel edge is then secured into a continuous receiver trim which secures the panel edge against wind uplift since we cannot install a panel clip at these locations. The panel turn up and receiver trim offer mechanical means of waterproofing the condition as well as allowing for unrestricted free movement of the panel within the receiver trim. So let's move to the third and final learning objective. Understanding thermal movement and exposed fastener versus standing seam metal roof panels. So what are the differences in using a standing seam versus exposed fastener panel? Well, metal roofing expands when it's heated and contracts when cooled. 
by attaching a panel with exposed fasteners, you are creating a fixed point at every fastener location. Exposed fasten panels were not designed to accommodate for thermal movement. Over time, the panels will continually expand and contract. They will push and pull at the fastener locations until one gives. The first to give is typically the panels as the tensile strength and thickness of the panel is not equal to that of the fastener. As a result, the holes where the fasteners are driven through will elongate over time from the constant motion of the roof panels. This is the number one cause of roof leaks with exposed fastener roof panels. Another issue is with fasteners being backed out of the panel and substrate from the constant thermal movement. Fasteners can be forced out of the substrate by the constant back and forth movement of the panels. Now that's not to say that exposed fastener roof panels do not have their place in the metal industry. Exposed fastener panels provide a very classic look with a variety of profile configurations. The relative cost and ease of insulation make them an attractive low cost solution as well. They are also very easy to repair and replace over standing seam profiles and have been a staple in the metal building industry for many years. Well, Jeff, it looks like we covered all three learning objectives. So thank you so much for your time and your expertise. So let's do a quick summary. All metals used in roofing expand and contract with changes in temperature of the material. Not all metal used in roofing expands and contracts at the same rates. It is very important to know what you're working with to ensure your roof is properly designed to accommodate for thermal movement. Standing seam roof panels rely on concealed clip attachments with no visible fasteners to secure the panel to the given structure. The clips allow the roof to expand and contract without compromising panel performance or weather tightness integrity. Each standing seam profile may have a clip designed specifically for that profile. So confirm with the manufacturer regarding which clip is appropriate for proper accommodation of thermal movement. There are three ways points of fixity accommodates for thermal movement of a standing seam roof panel. Establishing a point of fixity at the high end of the roof, close to the ridge cap or P, so thermal movement is directed to move down slope to the eave line. A point of fixity along the eave line or low end of the roof panel, so thermal movement will occur with the panel moving uphill to the ridge line. A point of fixity will occur in the middle of the roof run, so thermal movement will occur at both the high and low end of the roof panels. This installation detail applies when extremely long panel runs must be accommodated for. Thank you for spending time with AEP SPAN and taking our nano course. AEP SPAN is a premier metal roof and wall product manufacturer and a trusted partner for over 50 years, offering an unrivaled commitment to the success of architects in achieving innovative built environments where people work, learn, live, and play.